Welcome to Wisdom from the Mountain, a podcast about intuition, spirituality, and following your path. I'm your host, Tara Alexandria. I'm a psychic medium, intuitive guide, and healer. I'm here to support you to live from your intuition and find true healing and authentic growth. Thank you for being here and for your willingness to live your best life for yourself and for the world around you. Welcome to Wisdom from the Mountain. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for all of the incredible support that I got last week. It was amazing. It was uplifting. And what I do in my work is support other people in taking the next right steps for them. And I strongly believe in my work and I love what I do. And it was good to kind of have that turned around and be reflected back at me. So thank you so much for that. I really, truly appreciate it. Today, I wanted to talk about the idea of what it takes to move along your path, why it can take a lot of courage at certain moments, because there is always risk-taking involved. The reason that I was so drawn to talk about this today is because I personally have been going over the many aspects of my life where I have risked something deep in order to move myself forward on my path. I always see our lives as this long, beautiful story, just like a book, just like a novel, where things are really working out for us always, and we can't always see it until we are so far into our journey that we can look back and see the thread of truth or reason that was running through it the whole time, even when things seemed unreasonable, even when things seemed like they weren't going to fit. I've been thinking about why we need to take risks. I've been thinking about what it is within us that is so averse to taking risks that wants us to say to stay safe and comfortable, warm and secure, always knowing our environment, always being able to trust everyone and everything around us. And of course, it makes sense that we want to feel that way. We are human. We are animals. And we want to survive. That is really our aim as bodies on this planet. But the spirits within our bodies, the spirits came here to live out and experience our lives, are not interested in that aspect because there is a connection and a knowingness there that we're not here just to survive. We know that we're not here just to survive. And so our spirit or our inner voice or our hearts can call us forward on our path, can call us forward into the next expansion in our lives. And that can feel really unsafe. We can feel insecure We can worry that we don't have the same warm, comfortable feelings that we had when we were in our comfort zone, when we were in the same place. When I think about all of these times in my life, when I have been asked to take a risk, to stretch beyond my comfort zone, to even risk something that was very dear to me or that was very, very difficult to let go of or to turn away from. And even when there was doubt there, the thing that I was choosing was always so incredibly worth it. And so as I've been reviewing these things in my mind, I've just been noticing what I've had to risk and what was worth risking And what I often risked that I was not actually being asked by the universe to risk, but that I was risking because 
somehow I felt safer, whether that was with people or in the specific environments that I was in, or because it fit into society's rule book that I felt I was handed at a really young age. I would risk things like, like my own personal value. I would risk my own opinions. I would risk my own gifts and abilities. And when I say risk here, what I mean is I would not give them importance and let them come forward and make themselves known in my life. I would kind of swallow them and hold them back inside of myself to make other people more comfortable, but to make myself comfortable because I was nervous about being seen fully as that person that I really was. So for example, when I was younger and would make a new friend or enter into maybe a relationship, I would be very aware of the other person's interests. I would be very aware of the kind of music they liked. I would be very aware of whether or not they were more liberal or more conservative. I would be very aware of if they were maybe studious or athletic. And then I would hide a little bit the opposite aspect of myself. I would try to take the edge off of myself or at least that's what I felt it was and just keep myself a little bit small so that I would stay accepted or acceptable to them. And this was a really difficult thing for me, but it seemed like my norm. It was kind of a pattern that I fell into. And at least at that time, I remember thinking, this is just what you have to do. I remember thinking that I couldn't fully be myself. And of course, I'm always going to go back to hiding the fact that I was a psychic or a medium or a healer. I just didn't talk about any of that when I was young. And it gave me a really deep feeling of shame. And I was scared of it. I was very scared to share that with other people. It didn't take away my belief in it. It's just that I thought I had to sacrifice it. I had to um, really keep it small. So in this, in this sense, I just realized when I said the word sacrifice, what I mean by risk is that I was sacrificing those things that weren't actually being asked of me. The universe was not saying, will you please sacrifice yourself and stay small? Will you please sacrifice your interests and your hobbies and your abilities and your gifts so that you are not so big in this world, so that you're not so uncomfortable for other people? And what I've realized is that the universe will never ask you to risk those things about yourself. It will never ask you to hide who you really are. It will never ask you to hide your own value. It will never ask you to shape yourself into someone that you're not, ever. I really deeply believe that. But what I really wanted to talk about today is what it will ask you to do. What the universe will ask of you is often much bigger than those things and even harder But what it will ask of you is going to liberate you, going to expand you, and bring you into a space that gets you on your path to where you are truly going in this life, that will get you on a path to the person you're supposed to be tomorrow and next week and next year and 10 years from now and when you're 80. So what are those things that the universe will ask of you? The things that the universe will ask you to risk are things like security and comfort. It will ask you to risk things like relationships. 
it will ask you to risk things like years of an education that maybe wasn't right or maybe is no longer correct for you. It will ask you to risk letting go of getting awards and accolades for staying somewhere that you're feeling the call to leave. It will ask you to risk and to sacrifice the hows of how you move along your life path because it has other ideas for you, because it has a greater sense of what's right for you. And when you start to notice that every time you decide to take a new step, you are weighing what you're going to lose and what you're going to gain. You're weighing where you spend your time and where you don't. You're weighing who gets your time and who doesn't. And there are two very different ways to approach these choices. You can approach these choices from a place of saying, I'm going to lose the least in this situation. So I'm going to go with option A. Or you could look over at option B that says, you could gain the most here, but there isn't a guarantee. And here I'd like to tell you a quick story from an interview with Liz Gilbert that I saw on YouTube where she discusses her book, Big Magic, and she talks about how inspiration is something that visits you, that is a, an entity almost all on its own. And inspiration is something that says, hey, let's get in the car and let's go on this wild, crazy road trip and let's just drive, let's just go. And you go on this road trip and inspiration tells you to go here and to go there. And you are really following inspiration. And then suddenly inspiration and you are driving over a cliff and you hit the bottom and everything is absolutely destroyed and inspiration is just sitting there and looks at you and says oh my god that was so much fun let's do it again and you're like in shock and you're like everything just got destroyed why would i want to do this again and inspiration says but it was amazing wasn't it it was so much fun let's do it again and liz gilbert says that you have to follow inspiration. You have to go with inspiration because you're here to create. You're not here to say, I'll create if everything is guaranteed. You're here simply to create, to make the next thing, to allow inspiration to come in, to visit you, and to bring creations forward onto the planet. She says, those are the only rules. That's all there is. And I love this analogy just for life because I feel that we come here with no guarantees except for the fact that we will leave the planet one day. But we also have dreams. We also have our callings. We also have joy. And we get to follow each of those things or we get to sit back and decide, no, I'm not going to go there. Often in my work, people come to me and they are going through some huge change. They are either making choices around relationships, around job changes, around lifestyle changes. They are seeing themselves in a brand new way and they're going through these these huge inner changes that show that they can't continue being the person that they are right now. They need to somehow move into who they really are. And I feel that in my work, this is so normal and so okay to feel because you often need someone to pull you through a transformation to help you move from one state to another, to go from the caterpillar to the butterfly. It's like this process needs some juice behind it. It needs some guidance. It needs some security. But what they're often looking for is literally 
a sense of security and comfort that the vision they're seeing, the option B, is this viable route or at least a journey that will be worth it. They're looking to have someone validate that everything they're risking letting go of, that everything that is on the line is worth it. And that even if they don't end up with a triumph with option B, that the journey there is right, is necessary, is what's really calling them. And we always, of course, want to consult ourselves. We want to say, what am I feeling? What do I think? But it's not wrong to get an outside perspective. The outside perspective can often clarify for us, oh yeah, what I'm feeling really is right. It can give us this feeling that we aren't throwing something away or we aren't self-sabotaging or we aren't hurting ourselves or looking to hurt ourselves through the risks that we're taking. So the risks that the universe will definitely ask you to take are things like your security and comfort, the feelings that you are stable and safe and have the same relationships all of the time and have the same friendships all of the time and the same job and the same, same, same. You will always need to risk something to grow. You will always need to risk something to move forward, whether it's a conscious choice or not. But it's really best to make it a conscious choice because what it says to the universe is, hey, I'm aware that I'm co-creating with you. What are we making next? Show me what I need to do to transform, to crack open that shell and become whatever is inside, whatever's been transforming and cooking and getting ready to come forward. Instead of really trusting and being in this incredible energy of, I can't wait to see what my life is going to look like, and I'm so excited to be making these decisions, and I'm so excited about these changes, we can get really stuck and pulled back. We can get fearful and we can say things like, why is the universe challenging me so much? Why is it asking so much of me? I shouldn't have to risk this. I shouldn't have to sacrifice this. I shouldn't have to let go of this. But the truth is, if we just hold on to all of the same things, then we will not become the person we're supposed to be tomorrow or next week or next year and so on. And so we have to get into this time and space where we say, oh, okay, I trust that right now it's time to let go of this friendship because this friendship is not holding me up in the highest version of myself and is only going to pull me backwards. Okay, it's time to let go of this job. I realize that I'm no longer growing with this job or I'm no longer happy in this work or this just isn't a part of where I see myself in 10 years. Okay, I have to let it go. And once we can get into that space of calm and of letting go, we can move forward so much more quickly and with so much more strength. The universe doesn't ask us to take risks because it wants to punish us. We aren't sacrificing in the sense that we are hurting ourselves. We're sacrificing in the sense that we are allowing ourselves to expand. We're allowing ourselves to shed the baggage that was keeping us stuck in one place. We are expanding into the version of ourselves that we really want to be. And we're giving ourselves the opportunity to learn and to grow. At one point in my life, I was challenge to sacrifice a relationship. It was one relationship for another. And the test really had been there before the new relationship appeared. And I see this a lot with people. I see people who hold on to dating a partner because they aren't dating anyone else. (laughs) And then their real person appears and then their 
next partner appears and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm still in a relationship. But the person already knew inside of themselves that who they were with wasn't right or wasn't right anymore. And it just didn't feel necessary yet to put an end to that relationship. And so then the difficulty comes in where it becomes kind of like a human, messy, emotional thing because it then becomes about choosing one over another rather than just moving into the next phase with a really deep sense of grace and true understanding that divine timing was always there. We just weren't paying attention. There's also a really deep sense of potential loss when we are reaching for something we really want, when we feel like we're on the path of our dreams, but something isn't working out, when we feel like we have to sacrifice too much, there's a sense of things being taken from us. There's a sense of feeling like we'll be left sad and lonely, or we'll be left just completely bereft of any positive feelings about life. And what I've come to see is that these are only reactions that are happening within our body and within our brain. Our body and our brain reacts to change chemically. And those chemicals are stress chemicals. They are stress chemicals because our body is programmed to survive our body is programmed to keep us in balance. And so when change comes in and we're pushed or pulled or moved in one direction or another, our body reacts and we feel so uncomfortable. But what they've actually shown in um, a lot of scientific studies, especially with like, people working out, um, is that the emotional reaction to the inner changes is basically just this huge resistance to doing things differently, to getting different results, and from being a different person. And if the person can push through those low feelings that happen during change, the person gets to the other side where they now have, let's say, a really steady workout that they adhere to and they've been doing it for a month now and they've gotten through all those low feelings. And now on the other side, the exercise that they engage in actually brings them this huge level of a better life. It brings them that endorphin high. It brings them greater focus it makes their brain function better. Your brain functions so much better on exercise. I had a teacher at one point who said, if you only have one extra hour today and you're wondering if you should study or if you should go work out, you should go work out. It was during a really high testing period uh, when I was in grad school. And she said, that the more we worked out, the more we moved, the more we would move our bodies toward this positive change that we were making, which is really deepening our studies, deepening our connection with the medicine we were studying and, and really taking it in on a deep level, not just on a memorization level, not just on a surface level, but really transforming ourselves through the information. And I'd like to end this little conversation today by simply reminding you that when you are asked to take a risk by the universe, the only thing that you have to ask yourself, the only thing that you have to evaluate is, does this honor me? Does this honor my path? Does it honor my spirit? Does it honor the fact that I'm here on this planet? And if you feel like what you're risking is who you deeply are, then it's not a risk that the universe is asking you to take. It's a risk that your ego is putting on you. It's something your ego is saying, I'm willing to sacrifice this for you. But really, it's to keep your ego safe. It's a trick. 
And if your answer to this question is, yes, this honors me, this honors my higher path in this world, then that is what you need to lean into. That is a risk worth taking. That is a sacrifice worth making. You will only be supported when you take risks that are truly worth taking, that are worth you, that are worth a better life. You will only be rewarded when you sacrifice the things in your life that no longer bring you value, that no longer uplift your energy, that no longer contribute to your personal path and who you're meant to be. It is your job to say, if I'm feeling that this change is here, I'm going to trust that the universe has a plan for me on the other side of this change that is even better and more right for me than what I have now. The universe will only ask you to risk and to change in order to grow, in order to expand, in order to be more you. So it is your job to trust the risks that you are in, to trust the risks that are next, and to take them. If you take one thing away from today's episode, it is simply this message. Do not let yourself stay small. Do not let yourself feel small. When you are making decisions, you want to feel the bigness inside of you. You want to feel this expansion. You don't want to feel this contracted feeling that usually has fear and limitation around it. You want to feel the excitement of risk, the happiness of opening up to something new. And the real understanding that you're getting more and more in line with exactly who you are today and tomorrow and next week and next year, because you're always changing. This is an ever evolving journey and you get to trust that it's unfolding in exactly the right way for you. All right, my loves, thank you so much for listening. If you're not with me yet on Instagram, come find me at Yintrospection. If you'd like to book an appointment or look at the rest of my work, you can go to my website at www.terraalexandria.com. My summer course that I'm offering is called Follow Your Alignment, and it is all about supporting you in your next choices, in your next steps to expand into yourself in the most aligned and connected way. I'm so happy to be offering this work for you all, and I can't wait to see you in the group. And finally, don't forget to join my email list, especially if you are waiting for the next time that my books open for readings. You will be the first ones to know, and of course, I will keep you updated on the podcast as well. Thank you so much for being here. Have an amazing day, and I'll talk to you next week.